I don't know about you guys, maybe it's because I'm getting older, but it seems to me like technology is advancing so fast now that it's blinding. And almost every day I'm seeing a new breakthrough in something that is completely world changing. And I know that sounds hyperbolic, but check this out. This is crazy. Apparently, a team of scientists and engineers led by a NASA subject matter expert in electrostatics. This is a guy named Dr. Charles Bueller. 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 Fry. Dr. Charles Bueller and his team have developed a technology that creates thrust without propellant, purely by stimulating or creating uh, an electrical field, a, a field that propels a craft. And not only that, but they're saying that it is capable right now, they've already done this in the lab, of generating more than one G of lift or thrust. And not only that, but according to an interview that he just did a few weeks back with uh, Tim Ventura, this system works not only when it's switched on and powered up, but it works because it's field-based as long as there is an electrical charge in the system, which apparently, and I'm not an engineer, nor am I a physicist, and I don't have really any qualifications to discuss this other than what I've read, but I wanna share it with you. Hopefully someone out there smarter than me can check this and tell me what you think. But apparently when you switch this thing off, as long as there's a charge in the system, the thrust remains. So what they're saying is this can be used already as a form of space propulsion to propel spacecraft, satellites, that type of thing. But it gets even crazier because in this interview with Tim Ventura, he goes on to say that they've had incremental progress for a few years and then suddenly they optimize their process and the progress goes through the roof. They just, I think, a year or two ago broke past the 1G barrier where now the system can can create more than 1G of thrust. And he says there's theoretically no upper limit to this, that if they continue to streamline the process and the materials involved and the engineering involved, apparently this thing can get a whole lot stronger. What does that mean for you and me? Uh, I mean, I'm reading this as hover cars, spacecraft that lift off like the Millennium Falcon, or like a shuttlecraft on Star Trek, um, space elevators. Uh, I don't know what this thing is capable of in uh, the vacuum of space, but I imagine if you switch it on and turn it on, it can haul ass. Um, so this is pretty amazing stuff. Let me show you what I'm talking about, and then I'm gonna provide links to all this stuff. This is the article from The Debrief, uh, and this article is by Christopher Plain from 19 April, 2024. And uh, I won't read the whole thing, but I'll link to it in the show notes. It says, Dr. Charles Bueller, a NASA engineer and the co-founder of Exodus Propulsion Technologies, has revealed that his company's propellantless propulsion drive, which appears to defy the known laws of physics, has produced enough thrust to counteract Earth's gravity. A veteran of such storied programs as NASA's space shuttle, the International Space Station, the Hubble Telescope, and the current NASA dust program, Bueller and his colleagues believe their discovery of a fundamental new force represents a historic breakthrough that will impact space travel for the next millennium. Okay, quote, the most important message to convey to the public is that a major discovery occurred, Bueller told the debrief. This discovery of a new force is fundamental in that electric fields alone can generate a sustainable force onto an object and allow center of mass translation of said object without expelling mass. There are rules that include conservation of energy, but if done correctly, one can generate forces unlike anything humankind has done before. It will be this force that we will use to propel objects for the next 1,000 years. Here we go. Breakthrough in 2023 produces one gravity of thrust. So check this out. With an end seemingly within sight, the team immediately began to try newer and better designs. They continued to measure the thrust 
while also pretty much ruling out every conventional explanation they could come up with. This was not anything they had ever measured before. And then in 2022, something astounding happened. According to Bueller, his team began to see significant jumps in the force being generated. A quick look at the chart he presented to APEC shows that the tests performed between early 2022 and November 2023 resulted in a rapid climb, moving from 1,000th, 1,000th, and even one-tenth of gravity all the way up to one full Earth gravity. This means that their current device, or current devices, which Bueller told the debrief, weigh somewhere between 30 and 40 grams on their own without the attached test equipment, were producing enough thrust to counteract the full force of one Earth gravity. And then here's the chart from their presentation basically showing at the bottom here this axis uh, 2014, 2016, 2017, all the way up to 2023. And this is the force uh, measured in Gs all the way up to 1G. And this is where the breakthrough happened right here. So if I'm reading this correctly, and again, I don't know if I am, but as I read this, that's a hovercraft, at least. And if they can scale it more, I don't know what kind of payload you could expect with this, but you could basically create a drone without propellers. You could create an airplane that flies or an airship that flies without engines, purely electrically, which means that it would probably be very quiet. Here it is on Real Clear Science. NASA veteran claims propellantless propulsion breakthrough. Exodus. Technologies is the company. If we go to their website, this is what it looks like. Welcome to Exodus Propulsion Technologies, Inc., the next generation of space propulsion technology. Scroll down to learn more, and then it's a subscribe uh, box with an email. Here's the uh, Next Big Future article. So this is really fascinating. Uh, check out this interview with Tim Ventura and listen to... <laughs> This is going to blow your mind. Listen to what uh, listen to what Dr. Bueller has to say about this. Please speaking, if NASA handed you a blank check and said, "You know what? Do as much as you can." How far do you think that this could go with like the latest and greatest in terms of you know material and electronic components? Uh, I, I think it can go quite far. Um, to be honest, right now, as I said, we're dealing with the the battery world, so the chemical versions of these things they're no longer thin films; they're basically liquids essentially that are applied to services so they're they're basically crappy batteries and we're, we're trying to optimize the chemistry to optimize the charge injection and once we do that and apply our fields we'll see our force so that's why the force keeps getting higher and higher um, because we are more microscopic and as we become more microscopic the mass of our system goes way down and our thrust stays pretty high so that's what's exciting about it. Now, how far can we go? We're only doing DC. We haven't even done a lot of AC in these tests, which is pretty cool. Um, we, we've done AC up to a few, gosh, megahertz or so, but the effect doesn't scale with frequency as you would expect because it's not photon-based. It's field-based. So, But we do know that there are other versions of our thrust that can, be, that can take advantage of RF. And we will discuss those in the future as well. Uh, once we once we prove them out, it's, those are just theoretical. So the sky's the limit, really. Um, how much bound charge can you fit in something? How much, you know, if you think of a car battery, how much free charge is in a car battery? A lot of charge is in a car battery. A lot of you know, a lot of current is start, stored in there. A lot of energy is stored in there. So right now we're just kind of optimizing uh, that <clears throat> in a, in a two dimensional system, and then stacking it. So once we stack things, things you know, obviously the thrust goes way up. But these is, is the thrust per thruster mass. And the thruster mass is, is, is very, very thin, very, very small materials. They're not even metallic. So these things can get very, very light. And um and we're only, you know, we're still baby stepping it because we're still in the DC world. So as we get higher and higher with the AC, we, we think there are other ways that AC can help us, not just to, you know, the uh increasing our force but also uh changing its direction so theoretically 
there's a lot more that we can root out. And that's kind of how we do this. That's kind of how we approach this. Well, if A works, B should work. And if B works, C should work. If C works, D should work. So we're just kind of going down the path. And so far, everything has, you know, we've been lucky, knock on wood, everything, following the physics. It's been just doing what it's supposed to do. If you say you're making a battery this way, if you say you're making a thin film this way, if you say you're turbocharging an insulator that way, if you say you're microscopically etching a surface that way or making an asymmetrical capacitor that way, you should get a certain amount of thrust. And we've seen that. So we're just basically just following the progression of the science and um, where it tops out. I don't really know. I think we'll hit the breakdown of materials at some point where the materials just cannot pack up any more charge. We'll hit the dielectric strength of the insulators. That's bound to happen. Um, we we always test to break down. You know, we have we're not making new materials for this. Okay, yeah, that's that's one thing. We're not inventing new materials. So that that's even crazier. This is with I uh, understand the way I understand this. This is with off the shelf uh, technology or materials. Anyway, they're not inventing or creating anything new here. And I'm reading this as uh, they haven't optimized the process yet, but they can continue to optimize the process. And there's a lot of runway left for them to uh, basically increase the amount of thrust generated by this, this method. And then I, I would assume if they introduce um, nano-engineered materials, that would scale it even beyond that, what he's already imagining and then i imagine after that uh, it would be scalable by just size and making b a bigger unit right um somebody check me on this because i don't know I, I really don't know but i i know what i know is that this um dr charles bueller is legitimate he's the real deal and um it looks very very compelling uh, interestingly, you can see if you look on the left side of his presentation, so we're watching uh, Tim Ventura's YouTube channel, which by the way, you should absolutely subscribe to. Tim does outstanding interviews. His interviews are on point. He asks fantastic technical questions. He has a great mind for uh, picking apart complicated subjects and exploring them in a way that's very digestible with his guests. His channel is awesome. Uh, so I can't stress that enough. Check it out, subscribe, hit that bell. But look at the left side of the presentation. So this is Dr. Charles Bueller's presentation um, for APEC. And on the left side, slide 41, there's a diagram of a flying saucer. I don't know what this is all about, but that's really interesting. I, I wonder if that, uh, I can't really make out what it says, but um, uh, yeah. So anyway, fascinating stuff. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Is this something that's going to revolutionize uh, the way that we travel? I can imagine scenarios where you could build an airship, like a gigantic airship, and then power it with these electrical fields and um, have a totally silent or nearly silent way of cruising around the, the planet that way. I wonder what kind of velocities you could get. Um, I wonder if this works underwater, works in a vacuum works in air, would it, how would it perform underwater? Uh, those are my questions. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video. And hey, if you aren't already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being a part of Team Night Shift. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, keep looking up.